Timothy Paul. Timothy Paul. Timothy Paul. Timothy Paul is a breath of fresh air. It doesn't respond to the fact that we have a human rights crisis and it is that there isn't enough housing. You know, we need to hold the biggest polluters to account. Tamitha, the wonder kid of politics. She's the first wahine Māori to be the president of the Students' Association at Victoria University. She's the second youngest person to become a councillor in Wellington. And of course, the huge upset win last year, winning the Wellington seat central for the Greens party. My success stems from a deep curiosity about why things are the way they are. And I've always been really curious about why do people make the decisions that they make and who has the power and who makes the decisions. So for me, um, I've just been asking a lot of questions my whole life and that's meant that I've been able to do lots of activism, mahi, challenge authority, challenge the power and the communities that I come from, they like that. And so I do that for them. Did asking questions at school or uni ever get you into trouble? I did get into a lot of debates with my teachers at school and I think some of my peers kind of rolled their eyes a little bit uh, at some of that. Just challenging, you know, our history and the way that it's taught mm. and the way that it's represented back to us. Always challenging the way that my hometown was represented on the news um, in Tokoroa. And just asking questions, always being very suspicious of authority and always asking the question of who holds the power and who makes the decisions for our communities because I would look around me, my local MP was nowhere to be found, my local councillors did not come from Tokoroa and so for me it was always about how do we occupy those spaces so that we can make decisions that our communities need. And while you're at high school you're also working at KFC Yeah. and you Gained a lot of life experience there. Just tell me about that. What did you learn there? So my hardest job that I ever had and the job that taught me the most in life was working at KFC for four years while I was at school. And it taught me a lot about people and how I can listen to people, how I can communicate with people, how I can work in a team. And actually it is those low paid jobs that are doing the real mahi in our community and for me, it taught me all the tools that I needed in life. And so I've transferred those from KFC to Parliament now. Um, dealing with people, dealing with emotions, handling conflict, these are all the things that I learned while literally serving my community, the guy that they were after. Growing up, I think you once said that you felt a disconnection to who you are. And I I'm just want to expand on that. Is that culture or te ao Māori or something else? Mm. As we know, a majority of our people are urban Māori. A majority of our people live in the cities and that is a shared experience that we have where there is that real disconnection from our whenua, from our hapu, from our reo, from our whānau. And we grow up in these concrete metropolises and have that yearning towards reconnecting to where we come from and who we are. And for me, it's been important to speak about that experience because I know that it is one that most of our people feel. And there's that whakamā and that mamai when we can't speak our reo or we can't recite every line of our whakapapa line. I know that that's most people, that's most of our people. And for me, it's important that they see themselves represented in their leaders and that they see us trying to use our reo, trying to protect our reo, no matter how much or, or how little we have of it, and that they see that you, they are Māori enough and that they too can be part of this movement of resistance against attempts to whakaiti te tiriti o waitangi and to undermine our people and the fights that we have won over many generations.